runs through the triennial and, and sort of has guided how I selected artists. I was also very interested in artists, in contemporary artists who were finding new relevance in uh, practices that today we would call traditional or we would call you know artisano or a particular kind of skill. And uh, here we have an artist who is using the Indo-Persian miniature painting tradition. Her name is Hamra Abbas. Um, you know, she's mainly based uh, in, in, in Pakistan. And she is actually painting the uh, portraits, these really tiny, I mean, you can see how small they are, portraits of the transgender community in, uh, in, in Lahore. And this community is increasingly marginalized because they use traditionally to be engaged during life cycle rituals, like weddings and births. But now with modern society, uh, you know, for example, expensive and long weddings become less and less. There are more, much more modest affairs. So, so they used to be engaged, you know, to come and entertain guests, and they were notable for their incredible conversation skills. They were very knowledgeable, very intelligent, and they could, you know, entertain the guests, you know, through uh, conversation. But what's interesting is, of course, that these paintings are on silk. And why is that? Because if you look closely, the artist has also absorbed not just her miniature painting training, but also Chinese gongbi uh, technique, a literati technique. So very similar to the other work uh, elsewhere in the Triennial by the Chinese artist Lao Tongli from uh, Guangzhou. And this came about because I think she spoke of how in 2015 she was in residency in Singapore. And part of the residency, she taught her, she went for classes and learned uh, Chinese uh, gongbi technique. And so it's a very strange sort of assimilation of, of uh, you know, artistic traditions from two different parts of Asia. So again, we're reminded of when we say globalization, when we say that we are, uh, are sort of, you know, absorbing influences from all over the world, it is not necessarily just an orientation to the West. We are in the age of the rising Asia, and here you see the sort of artistic exchanges between you know artists from one part of Asia to to another. And this work should be compared to, and we put next to it, uh, the only posthumous artist uh, project in the uh, Triennial. This is Nandala Bose, who is one of the leaders of the Bengal school of uh, Indian painting in the early part of the century. These are probably from the late 30s uh, towards the latter part of his life, so to speak. And you'll notice they're all ink works, you know, or, or on paper, on very delicate paper. And some of them, particularly the ink wash, and, and look at the two lotuses, for example, clearly the model is East Asian painting. And what very few people in the West realize is that this school, which during the period of British colonialism, tried very hard to develop an independent aesthetic style, a style that was Indian, that was indigenous, they felt, but it was modern, but also that it did not, you know, have a kind of so much influence from the British academic oil painting tradition. But what is interesting is, of course, the Bengal school looked towards East Asia, towards Japan. In fact, they, they had a a long history of you know Japanese scholars and artists coming through and hence you see these works that look very strongly like East Asian ink painting with the seal and the artist signs his name in Bengali but they are Indian completely Indian you know so I think we need to rethink you know both from the early 20th century here we have and that a contemporary work that when we talk about you know modern art and contemporary art we must also take into account the interaction and how artists from one part of Asia learn from another part of Asia. Not, not everything is oriented towards Europe and America.